when galgi complex endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria are absent so these are all absent hence it cannot perform the aerobic respiration it cannot perform aerobic respiration it only can perform anaerobic respiration so hence the entamoeba histolytica is known as obligate anaerobe obligate anaerobe so obligate anaerobe which one so the entamoeba histolytica is called as obligate anaerobe okay now so next if you see that entamoeba histolytica trophozoite produces an enzyme called as histolysin it produces an enzyme called as histolysin the name itself indicating histo means tissue lysin means damage so here the enzyme when it is produced it damages the tissue then it it pierces the mucosa uh, submucosa mucosa and enters into the the intestinal tissue and for the locomotion lobopodial type of pseudopodium will help so locomotion is caused by the lobo uh, lobopodial type of pseudopodium tissue is damaged by the histolysin and it enters into the intestinal walls it deeperly enter, enters and it feeds upon the tissue debris as well as rbc so rbc is ingested tissue is ingested bacteria also ingested sir so when this bacteria ingested food vacuoles rbc ingested food vacuoles are present in the fecal matter we can identify the this infection so rbc ingested for example if you take some bacteria are present otherwise rbc are present so rbc ingested food vacuoles bacteria ingested food vacuoles tissue debris ingested food vacuoles are seen in the trophozoite so with the help of that we can identify the trophozoite stage okay next let's see pre cystic stage so here if you take the pre cystic stage it is it is non feeding non feeding non motile non feeding non motile non pathogenic it is non pathogenic so it will not feed upon the tissue it will not move anywhere because lobopodium disappears after the trophozoite stage and it is non pathogenic it do not causes any disease or any infection to the man so that is a, a non pathogenic stage and it is small round or spherical round or spherical so this is round or spherical so if you look at that so if you look at look at this structure so generally so here some granules are present so these granules are called as glycogen granules what are these granules glycogen granules so glycogen granules and uh, chromatoid bars what are this chromatoid bars so glycogen granules and chromatoid bars are present in the this round spherical pre cystic stage so here these two are reserved food so what are these two reserved food materials of the uh, pre cystic stage okay now next cystic stage so generally after the pre cystic stage so here this is also inactive round form and it is covered by a thin delicate resistant uh, cyst so here in order to face the intestinal condition in the human being the pre cystic stage will develop a cyst around its structure so now that stage is called as cystic stage okay sir so the formation of the cyst around the pre cystic stage is called as encystation so means the delicate so the delicate cyst is devel developed around the stage that process is called as encystation so here after encystation so if you take after encystation the nucleus of the the nucleus of the uh, cystic stage will undergo two divisions will undergo two divisions so as a result of that total four nuclei are formed how many nuclei are formed four nuclei are formed 
so here now this stage is called as tetranucleate cyst now this stage is called as tetranucleate cyst so this is the infective stage to the man this is the infective stage to the man so what is the infective stage to the man tetra tetra means how many four nucleate means nucleus this is a cystic stage so this tetranucleate cyst is the infective stage to the man whenever it is transferred to the whenever it is transferred to the our food and uh, water so we will get the infection of the uh, this endamoeba histolytica so let us see life cycle